Hi, I'm Lawson, and I'm here with our Director of Product Development, John Romero. We're here to take a closer look at the CD7 Digital Dash Display. This is the CD7. It's our brand new Motorsports Dash. It's a beautiful, super bright color display, 7-inch diagonal, 800 by 480. When you're outside, this does not get washed out by the sun. It's direct sunlight readable. The CD7 means can display 7-inch. It's designed to display and log data that comes in on the CAN bus. And to that end, it's a fully programmable CAN bus and it has two channels. So you have two completely independent CAN buses that can be running at different speeds, that can be coming from different products. All of these things come into the dash and it combines them together and treats the data. It doesn't really care where the data came from. As long as it came in on one of the buses, it'll combine it together and use it as if they all came from the same location. You can define the CAN buses yourself, which is kind of an advanced topic. I would generally recommend you don't do that. Uh, or you can take one of the setups that we already have. And of course, we have the setups for every AEM product. We also have setups for um, quite a few of uh, competitors' products or other, other CAN-based products. So you can just plug them in and use them right out of the box. There are two basic versions of the CD7 display. There's the CD7, which is the display-only version. And then there's the CD7L, which is the display with a built-in logger. The logging is 200 megabytes, up to 100 hertz per channel, and each channel can be individually set for its own log speed. That will give you a huge amount of logging. I mean, basically, it's generally over 20 to 24 hours of log time. And the logs are downloaded directly into AEM data for analysis. The important thing is, is it's, it's not touchscreen. And a lot of people have asked us questions, why isn't it touchscreen? And the answer is, you can't use a touchscreen in a race car because you're wearing gloves. You've got seven shift lights across the top and two warning lights on the side. Of course, completely programmable. Um, we include a wizard in it that will set up the shift lights for you. If you'd like, you can also individually address them. The enclosure has sealed connectors on the rear and also comes with the anti-vibration mounts. Even the communications cable is uh, IP67 rated sealed. The dash enclosure is cast aluminum and it's water resistant. It can be used in a boat, it can be used on a motorcycle, uh, any kind of motorsports where the environment is gonna play a factor. You've got two buttons on the front. Both of those buttons, of course, are also sealed, but they're large buttons, so they're easy to use when you have racing gloves on. There are some installations where you're gonna to wanna to put them maybe on a steering wheel or somewhere else. These buttons are also passed out through the rear connector, so you can remote mount buttons on the steering wheel anywhere that makes sense for you. The left button is page, and it lets you actually change the page. You cycle through the pages. And the right button is a memory reset. So if you've got something like uh, average lap times or uh, maximum RPMs, anything that has a memory, you can clear that with the right button. One of the things that you'll see with competitor units is they may have a huge number of LEDs that go down the side, and they make them available to tell you when something's gone wrong. But the trouble is, is that you don't really know what each LED means or you don't remember what each LED means because there's so many of them. The graphical dashes allow you to insert an actual graphic that tells you what's wrong and you can use text to explain it as well. So rather than simply having a red light turn on, you can, you can have the red light turn on, but you can also bring up an image that says you have an oil temperature problem and they're standard SAE images. So all of these are available for you and you can take it as far as you wanna go. Everything from the blinkers to high beams, low beams, any kind of temperature warnings. If your coolant temperature is too cold uh, when you're still warming up the race car, you can have the blue, the blue logo show up, then you change it to red when it's too hot. There's no limit to what you can do because you have the ability to do the graphics yourself. You can import your own graphics, you can use any of the graphics that we supply, any PNG file or bitmap file will work. The CD7 has seven user programmable pages. Four of those you toggle through by pressing on the left button. Uh, normally that would be something like the warm-up page, maybe a race page, maybe a diagnostics page. Uh, then there's another page that's a startup page, so when the dash fires up for the first time it'll come up with a, uh, maybe a splash logo for your team or your sponsors or, or whatever, whatever you want to put there. And then there are two specialty pages. One of them is called the on change page, which can be programmed to change to that page whenever any user specified channel 
changes. So that could be something like if an error starts, you can have it jump to this page and display that. Or if maybe a, a, a switch in the cockpit, you, ch you turn the knob on, the, on, on a switch in the cockpit, uh, it will jump to the page, the on change page, and you can have set up there for all of the uh, descriptions of what that switch does. Then as soon as you stop changing that channel, it waits a little bit of time that's programmable and it jumps back to the page you were on. The other page is the alarm page, which is it's kind of a last ditch effort where it'll abandon whatever page you're on and go to a dedicated alarm page that is very, very big and bright. And the idea is to get the uh, driver's attention in the most severe way and, and explain what's actually going on. And the driver has to acknowledge that page, then it will throw them back into the normal page rotation. Besides the dedicated alarm page, which is kind of seen as a last ditch uh, effort, the basic alarm setups in the dash are fully programmable and you can do multiple things with them. You could do something as simple as turning on one of the warning lights on the side, you can trigger text on the bottom of the screen or anywhere you want and you can have the text say whatever you want in whatever color you want uh, and you can even put in flashing backgrounds or whatever you like to do. You can also put in channel values in that text so you could say not just that you have an oil pressure problem but that you have a low oil pressure problem and that it's 10 PSI. What that allows you to really do is it allows you to have different stages of warnings. You may have a, a, a water temperature warning that says your, your temperature's getting warm, pay attention to this. You may have another alarm that fires that says your temperature is actually getting very hot. You should really pay attention to this. And then you could, last ditch effort, you could go to the alarm page and says your temperature is too hot, shut the engine off right now. Abandon the run, abandon the lap, we're done. So you don't have to be stuck with just a single alarm. You can nest these things however you want. And of course, you can also make them uh, conditional on other channels. So you would only have a water temperature alarm fire if the engine was actually running. Uh, after it shuts off and gets into cold soak or heat soak, then you, you don't want to have the dash going into alarm mode. So that's all programmable. One of the greatest things about the CD7 is that it is, of course, fully graphic, but it's fully user programmable and user configurable. All of the screen layouts are customizable, everything about them. We provide templates for you to start with if you'd like to. You can use those, you can modify those, or you could just throw them out and completely design your own screens from scratch, from a blank slate. You can change anything you like on them. You can use these setups and you can um, just modify them, maybe change the channels, change the scalings, or you can decide to just throw these out completely and do your own from scratch. When you do that, you've got all sorts of graphical elements you can use, and in fact, you would have the same tools that we use to create these base versions, like a bar graph display for the TAC, a circular display for tachometer, or you can put something like the gear number. They're aware of depth, so you can say which one is in front of the other ones. Uh, it can be text that comes up that's based on channel values. It can be colors that are changing based on channel values. You've got the ability to do individual icons. So not only do you have to have, uh, or, or do, do you have the ability to just have lights light up, you can actually tell it, this is the image I want you to put on the screen. To edit the CD7 setups, or to create your own, you use AEM's Dash Design software. This software is available for download on our website. It's free, it's included with every Dash. AEM Dash Design is kind of your home base for everything you want to do to customize the setups for your screen. This is also where you set the data logger, uh, where you do things like set your odometer, uh, er everything that you want to do to configure the screen, you set this up in AEM data. Most likely when you use Dash Design for the first time, you're just going to be making small changes because we send this out with setups that'll work with all the AEM ECUs uh, preloaded. But let's say you wanted to change, in this case, oil pressure and display something like fuel pressure. Maybe you don't have an oil pressure sensor hooked up. In that case, it's actually quite simple. You just, in this case, we're uh, changing the text label from oil to fuel. And then we're gonna change the channel that it's displaying, again, from oil to fuel pressure. There it is. And once you've got that done, you simply plug in the dash and you can send a new calibration to the display. You can also purchase the CD7 with the optional VDM. That's the vehicle dynamics module that has a built-in GPS, uh, three-axis accelerometer, and a three-axis gyro. And what that does is that gives 
the dash and the logger all of the positional information from the vehicle. That allows you to do track mapping and lap timing. Once you have that data, if you want to do lap timing, now the dash knows where you are and you can use the GPS-based location for lap timing data. You can also use it for predictive lap timing. So you tell it where your start finish line is one time. It will remember that until you give it another one. And from then on out, every time you pass that location, it's going to increment your laps. It's going to compare your fastest lap or your current lap to your fastest lap. And it will compare where you are on the track compared to where you were on the fastest lap. And it tells you what your delta is going to be, whether you're trending ahead or trending a little bit behind. And all that's enabled once you give the dash, the GPS location, and all the other data from the VDM. The basic CD7 comes with a USB connector that connects to the rear of the dash and to your PC. It's not a connection you're gonna have to make very often because you're really only gonna have to plug into it when you're sending a new setup to it. But if you do connect to it, you can leave it connected here and maintain the waterproof sealing on it. The CD7L is a little bit different. Because this is a logger, you're going to be connecting to it a lot. You're going to be connecting to it all the time. And since the connection is at the rear of the, of the dash, we're including an extension that's fully sealed. You hook this up to the rear of the dash and you leave it hooked up. And this is a sealed connector. And you mount this remotely, somewhere where it's easy to get to, maybe by the side of the car, or just somewhere, somewhere obvious. That way you can plug into this location, put the cap on it when you're not using it, and it remains its watertight connection. That comes with the basic cable there. You can also purchase the CD7 bundled with AEM's VDM. And in that case, you'll receive this, which is just a direct plug-in, and it plugs directly into the CD7 harness, no wiring required. So there you have it from the man who was instrumental in getting this to you guys, all of our racers out there. Uh, we're going to have some more videos coming up in the future. As John mentioned, we're going to do a more detailed analysis of the Dash Design software. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below or feel free to give us a call at 310-484-2322 or write us an email, sales at aemelectronics.com. For more information, visit aemelectronics.com.